Hello, I am just getting ready to go meet my friend for dinner. Um, I haven't gone long, but I wanted to show you what I bought yesterday, right? I was saying to my friend yesterday, how can you explain this feeling to a guy if you've seen that friend on TikTok? Picture the scene, and girls will understand this, but guys won't. Last night, finished work, and I do a retail park shop. Asda, TK Maxx, Home Sense, Home Bargains, Asda, Sainsbury's. I went to Matland as well, actually. There's a Matland by me, which I had no idea about. Three hours out, or Starbucks. Three hours out, rang my mother on the way home, FaceTimed her when I got in, did a show and tell. Absolute pure joy. There's just nothing that a trip to TK Maxx can't fix, personally, I don't think. Um, so let me show you what I got. There were so many Christmas decorations everywhere. It was really hard not to get carried away. And I think I am going to start buying like little bits. But as I said, it's October. Calm yourself. You don't have to get all the joy in one go. But the thing is, like with TK Maxx, you don't pick something up and you see it. You might never see it again. And that's both a blessing and a curse. Um... So anyway, I got a Christmas mug, which I am obsessed with. This is so big, like look at the size difference. It's like a full-on builder's mug. But how cute, and it's pink inside. This was also only a fiver. They had loads of nice ones there. Like a little Christmas house. I love that, because obviously most of the stuff I got is um, red. Like I tend to go for really traditional Christmas stuff, and that is my favourite. But I thought in this flat, like I've got little bits of pink, so I thought it would be nice to... Bring that in. Then I bought this, which I'm also obsessed with. A little Christmas glass. It's got like a nutcracker on it and a little ballet dancer. And some bows and snowflakes. Like how pretty. I actually never drink out of a glass, but I thought I could put wine in it. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love this, but I literally never drink out of a glass. And then I thought, red wine, Christmas time. You don't mind not so much like having a stem on red wine, do you? So I got that. And then this I bought, which is so rogue, because it's Christmas bedding. I've never bought Christmas bread bedding. I don't know if it's tacky. I actually don't know how I feel about it. However, I saw the print, and I just loved it. And it's Chelsea Piers, which is obviously such a good brand. I can't believe that it was in TK Maxx. This is a king size, and it was £30 down from £90. Um, and it's reversible. So you can either have the stripes or this side. So I told myself I'd pick it up because it was the last one there. I'd come home and see how I feel and then maybe return it. But the chances of it being returned are getting slimmer and slimmer by the day. But I'm thinking maybe if I have the stripes, like I don't even have pattern bedding. I have plain white bedding. So this for me couldn't be more rogue. But then I just thought, it's Christmas. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. Will you please let me know if this is too, if this is tacky. Do I care though? I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking of having the stripes and then maybe the pillows out in this. And obviously you can fold it over like they've done over there. To see the two prints. I just love this print. Really, I should get the pyjamas. But yeah, this is like my favourite type of Christmas traditional print. Um, what else did I get? Oh, I got um got some candle or like smelly things this is just from asda it was like three pound it smells amazing i haven't lit it yet but no even i have now on my table with the lid off it smells like in the room you can smell how strong it is so i'm excited to light that that is absolutely divine um and then this is the biggest game changer of my life pumpkin spice latte glade plug-in Right? I can't express, this is obviously just the empty box. I can't express how much joy this gave me last night. I plugged it in over there. Instantly, like the whole room smelled of pumpkin spice. Because I've got one of these in my hallway. But it's behind a mirror because it's the only plug point there. And I feel like it can't really smell. I've just got like a vanilla smell. I don't know. I don't even know if it does anything. I can't smell it that much. Occasionally I get wafts of it. This, oh my god. Honestly, if you see this, you need to get it. It is one of the best things I've ever bought. I'm obsessed and I can't wait for Christmas time to put like a mulled wine spiced apple type one in there. Honestly, it's so good. It's really hard to know what to wear because it's fully winter time, but it's been like 17, 18 degrees today and yesterday. So it's actually quite warm out. So I don't know if you can see, I've just put um, 
and they're the trousers on. And now when you have like an outfit idea in your head, I don't know if you can see it, and I put it on and I actually don't like it, but it's what it is at this stage. I actually don't even know where we're going. We've decided, we've been messaging back and forth all day about where to go, what we fancy, and we've changed, we've both changed our minds like 15 times, so, um, yeah, I don't know where to go, but I'm heading off now. Hi loves, you know how crazy I look, but I'm just getting ready to go out for my friend's birthday, and I thought I'd vlog, I do like a little get ready with me, because it's been a very long time since I've done that, and I've honestly felt like a troll all week this week. Like a sad troll living under a bridge. So it's finally the weekend. And uh, yeah, cheers to that. Cheers to feeling normal again. Oh my god, that's delicious. I haven't had a pink gin for a while. That's very good. Um, yeah, I don't know what went on with me this week. Although, although I did get my period. <laughs> And then I was like, maybe that's why. My friends are always like, that's why. Like, it's PMS. But I think because sometimes I have and sometimes I don't. I just get confused by it. And every time I'm like, is this me? Is it hormones? Like, I don't understand. And it confuses me. And it scares me. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I feel more normal, finally. I know. We're going out tonight. I actually don't know what I'm wearing because the outfit that I'm supposed to be wearing hasn't come. So that's great, but I'm not going to stress. I just feel like I'm excited to have a night out with the girls, dinner, bougie vibes, and I'm excited to dress up. I feel like in London it's very easy to not dress up these days. Like when you go out, I feel like people, people don't always dress up anymore. I think London's gone quite casual. I was watching the Victoria's Secret fashion show this morning, the new one, but then I feel like most people then I reminisce over the old shows. So I was looking back at the 2018 one and then it gave me makeup inspo. I was like, that's the makeup I want today, like glowy. I usually go for dark makeup and I love, I think in my last vlog I was actually like, I love dark reds and oranges. But I've literally seen that video and I'm like, I want to go light and glowy. I never put a roller in my hair either, but I watched um, a video of another girl on YouTube doing like Victoria's Secret makeup and hair, and she curled her front bit under and then rolled it under, which is very new to me. And again, first time I'm trying something before a night out. <laughs> Probably not very sensible, but yeah, I'm hoping it's gonna work out. I don't want like super curly hair, that's why I haven't like pinned it properly. I kind of want the bottom to be just, yeah, quite loose, but I want like volume and I want maybe like a side part, just for a change, you know? I am still underpainting from seeing it from Mary Phillips, which is Kendall Jenner's makeup, like, got to be two years ago now. It's probably like an old makeup video that I've already done about it. I'm still doing it. <laughs> I just think it's, it just makes sense because then by the time you put your foundation on, you're putting your foundation on a nicer canvas, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm already giving myself a jawline and concealed eyes before I put the foundation on rather than like trying to do it all on top. I just feel like I use less foundation when I do my makeup like this. Pulling out the same palette that I've been using for about 10 years. Like it's probably not healthy or acceptable to do it, but like look how much I got left. And if I was to rebuy something, I would just want this exact same colour. So it's just like the perfect colour for the art, you know, it's like Kind of just like having a bronzer, like a neutrally brown. Actually, the tutorial that I watched, I actually didn't watch any of the makeup. I only watched the hair. <laughs> and now I'm like, I probably should have. But I just feel like you know what Victoria's Secret makeup's like. It's just, yeah, it's just glowy and light. Like lots of highlighter, bit of sparkle. I can't do silver eyes. Like, that's too far for me. Doesn't suit me. But I have got... I've got the Charlotte Tilbury Paint Pot. This is like a rose gold one, which is lush. And I've got the Urban Decay Moon, oh, I was gonna say Moon Boot. <laughs> it's Space Cowboy, I was close. Like, this is so nice. So I just feel like I'll put that on top of 
this maybe. Yeah, it's just so glowy and nice. I've, I've used this quite a bit actually. I'm thinking outfit wise. I kind of want to wear a blazer but I want to leave it open. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Although I haven't got any of the thin denier tights because I've scagged every single one that I've worn. Every pair that I've worn over the last two weeks I've scagged. And then today I was like getting, you know, getting ideas ready for outfits. And I realised I haven't got any left, so I'm like, whatever. I'm just not going to wear tights then, even though it's in October. It's funny, like, I don't know if you feel like this, but when you get older, like, when I was 25, it wouldn't matter the weather. There would just be no way I'd be wearing tights. I would be in bare legs and boots in the winter, like thigh-high boots, and that would be it. But I don't know, something happens, I think. And it's obviously in fashion now, like, I love those thin tights, but I think something does happen as you get older and you're like, Oh, well, I don't want to be cold. Like, at what age should I start thinking that? Because when I was younger, wearing a coat was, like, an offence. When my mother used to ask me to wear a coat, I'd be like, no, please just let me go out and freeze. And literally, I remember going out one Christmas time, like, when I was in uni. It was snowing, and I was in a mini dress. So ridiculous. But then, yeah, something happens as you get older, and you're like, obviously, you don't want to be cold. And then... You opt for comfort a bit and, and sensibility. Is that right? Obviously complete silence when I do that cat eye. Because I can't, I definitely can't concentrate and do that at the same time as talking. I've been using Skin and Me now for a good few months and it's been amazing. Like I really enjoy it. But it's made my skin really dry. So I've stopped using the, well I haven't stopped yet but I ordered some different stuff. So as soon as that comes, I'm going to stop using the cleanser and the moisturiser. Because, yeah, my skin is dry. So I'm really hoping, obviously, this makeup needs to be super glowy. So I'm really hoping the moisturiser pulls through for me this evening. If you've seen any of my old makeup videos, then you'll know heating the eyelash curler is an absolute must for me. It's probably my biggest hack is yeah heating them up and then like really like, yanking the eyelashes up yeah the last few times i've done my makeup i haven't really liked it and you just feel like something's off and i don't know if it's because my skin now has been a bit drier and like not the best oh, so i'm really hoping it pulls through i feel like you can't really tell until you do your foundation <laughs> and then when the, when the foundation's on it's too late anyway to do anything about it my phone and that was my friend to check if I was alive because <laughs> I literally haven't um I haven't messaged back in the group where I've been all day and you're just like in your own world and it's so funny we want to take two pictures but both we both had the Canon G7X right which is such a lush camera both of ours broke like it's such a nice camera but the screen thing breaks and even I took it back to the repair, it's been repaired once and I took it back to the repair shop again the second time and the guy was like, this is going to cost you about £500 just to repair it because the screen fully snapped off it. And he was like, it's just rubbish, like it'll just keep breaking again because the screws always come out. But yeah, it's obviously rubbish because the camera I've got now is too big to take out and the flash is like, it's like a full on photographer's flash but... Um, yeah, my friend just rang me and we've decided, we've just discovered that she's got the same camera as me. So she's taking the camera and I'm taking the flash teamwork. So hopefully we can have some nice pictures. But yeah, it's now it's such a struggle, like we were just saying then on the phone, like we all used to live together. Well, the three out of the four of us tonight used to live together. Oh, when you live with your friends, like it's so fun getting ready and going out and we used to live in such a fun house so my friend would be directly above me like our bedrooms are identical so that's not even relevant to the story but it was just everything was easy um so yeah me and Sophie always used to like start our makeup and then get ready and then Renee used to be on the top floor and we were just always like in and out of each other's rooms or she'd ring me like oh do you want to come up here and get ready or then they'd be running into my room can I wear something and I don't know I don't know if I took it for granted at the time I don't think I did I think I always knew like how fun and how fab it was but like especially now as you're older like Sophie then was just like oh my god I wish I got ready earlier now but when you get ready by yourself you just put it off and I'm like same as me like 
I'm running late because I wanted to um I wanted to record my podcast today. But I don't know, there's something like when you're by yourself. Getting ready is just not as fun. That's partly why I wanted to vlog. Oh, that's too close. <laughs> it's literally, I think I thought that was this. And this is like a mist and you can spray it that close. This is a set in spray and I fully just like doused my face then. I kind of wish that at the time when I was younger, I wish I vlogged and stuff. Like when I was, when I first moved to London, I didn't even think about any of that stuff. But I, me and my friend, my other friend I used to live with, my friend Amelia, we used to go out four times a week. And when you go out that much, I feel like it's always fun to try new makeup looks. So yeah, I always used to get inspired by something. Not like now today, I'm like, oh, I've watched Victoria's Secret, I want that. But it used to be like that all the time. And it's generally now, so obviously I don't go out as much. I mean, sometimes if it's still a big night out, I do some, I do still like to try different things. So I don't go out that much, so I'm just like, okay, I usually stick to my own. I also am loving this hourglass concealer. I always used to use the NARS one. The, yeah, Radiant Creamy Concealer. This is amazing, but I feel like I just go through them really fast. I use the pot. And I really rate this, especially, I use this for under eyes, I, I really rate it for that. And I do love the NARS, but I thought I'll try something different and try the hourglass, and I love it. Because the NARS can sometimes get like a little bit dry, but the hourglass is really, really creamy, and you really don't need that much of it. So the first time I used it, I put on like as much as I do of the NARS. It was so much, like it was all under my eyes, it was like crazy. So you really don't need that much of it. But, but I think I think this is good for like spots and stuff because it is a bit thicker so it like stays put. So yeah, usually I also add a bit of this NARS one under my eye. Um, I did buy the Hourglass Concealer Brush which I absolutely love. Like it's very, very good. But I do still think for under eyes, I just think the finger is good. Especially for this because it warms, it warms it up. I just think sometimes when I use the brush, it kind of like takes the product off. Uh, but this is a really nice brush. I do really rate that. I want to try the uh, um, foundation one as well, actually. I really want to try the Huda Beauty powder. The, the one that she got. I feel like lots of people use it in pink. That's great. Bro. But yeah, at the minute I'm using the Givenchy one. I just feel I really want to try and tap this really light because... I feel like the last few times I've done my makeup, when I've done this stage, I don't know if I've done it too fast after putting my concealer on, I feel like it's taken the concealer off and I've got my dark circles back after putting the powder on. Like now, I mean they are there a little bit, but like they're not that bad, you know, and then I feel like I would put the powder on and it must be like taking a layer of concealer off and then obviously when you've got the powder on, you can't do anything about it then. Oh, they've changed the packaging, like it's shiny. Mine is matte. Ah, oh, and this is in the rose colour. So basically my friend got me this because she knows I use this one. So then she got me another one. And this has lasted me so long, by the way. I, at least a year and I use it all the time. Like, it's really good. Oh, but this is pink. Oh, that's exciting because I wanted to try the Huda Beauty pink one. And it does come with this as well, but I never use that. Oh my God, look at that. You just put something out to the universe and then... Then you get it, oh, except I've already put the white on the side now. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, okay. Wow, that feels like a lot, but it's a night out, isn't it? So, we're going for it. Okay, I haven't done my makeup this intensely for a long time. I tend to try and go a bit more natural these days. Tonight is not, it's not looking to shape up for me. Okay, let's go in with some mascaras. This is their Fai, which if you follow my YouTube, I posted a little short of me reviewing this the other day. Love it. Love the brush. It's not clumpy. Uh, it's just for me, like I said, because I like big eyelashes. I still have to use another mascara on the top. But um, I do love this. Like, I love the brush. And then I also put a brown... I use some brown eyeliner. This is the Morphe one, and it's really good. I absolutely love it. It's in the shade Trendsetter. I really, really like it. Um, it's like creamy, you know, it's, n it's not dry at all. Really nice. And I put that at the top here, because when you curl your eyelashes, like, up as much as me. 
you can sometimes get like the gap you can see the skin although i feel like victoria's secret vibes are like white eyeliner on the teardrop which i know is dated but i'm gonna commit to it because i used to love doing that so i'm bringing it back tonight uh i've got the charlotte tilbury one it's not white it's new so i think i'll do that i don't think i'll go proper white or will i because i have my white tones <laughs> Like, I don't want to go Alex Earl. I love Alex Earl, don't get me wrong. But I don't want to look like I'm trying to do Alex Earl makeup from two years ago. I want to look like I'm doing Victoria's Secret makeup from, like, ten years ago. <laughs> this is actually the Huda Beauty um, brush, like, the powder brush. I bought the brush, but not the powder. So, yeah. But it's nice because it's, like, angled, so I can just sort of, like, dab it in. This is definitely going to show up on those pictures with a big flash, though. It's my only issue. It should be okay. Oh wow, love, love, love this, guys. This is in the, excuse the accent, Wale Rose 03. That for me, like with the pink, even though it's, yeah, even though it's pink, it feels warmer on my skin. Okay, then I'm using the Refai bronzer. I've been using this for ages, I love it. I realise I am the type of person, as much as I love makeup, and I do love trying new stuff, like blushes, I, I'll always try new blushes. I, I love to buy, like, different things. But when it comes to, like, staples, like foundation. Foundation. I've been using this NARS one for years and years. And occasionally, like, there's been a time where I'm like, oh, I'm just going to try another one. But, I don't know. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? Like, the other, the other bronzer I used to use was the Chanel one. But I find this stronger, just as good, and it's cheaper. So I felt like with the Chanel one, I used to use a little bit more of it. Generally, if something's good, I'm just like, I'll, st I'll stick to that. I'm a very loyal makeup customer. Blushes is probably the only thing that I mix up. Like, I haven't really got a loyalty to a blusher. I buy one, I love it, I use it all the time, and then I might buy another one next time. I also use the MAC, which is a classic again. This is actually better on the, like my forehead. I don't actually usually use, oh my God, this curler. I don't usually use the Refai on my forehead because it doesn't blend that easily. Okay, I'm going to get my phone and Pinterest the makeup because I feel like I don't know what they wear on the bottom of their eyelashes and blush. I know lips, they go quite pink. Which might be an issue for me because I love a dark lip. But I am going to commit to it. So I'll try and go as pink as I can. Okay, yeah. They have got mascara on. Okay, they've also got really light on the corner of their eyes. So I'm going to put a bit of this white pencil on. This is just an NYX one. I'm just going to put that. Which is obviously like super bright. But then I'm going to blend it with either... I'm going to try the Charlotte Tilbury pencil. It's like the Champagne Diamonds pencil. And then also I'm just going to take the lighter colour in this palette. And then just blend it out. And then I've got the perfect highlighter for this. is the Iconic one. This is such a good highlighter, but it's like that pinky, frosty colour, which is obviously perfect for this makeup look. We need like the tiniest bit of this, it's so strong. In the corners. Okay, I'm actually tempted to try the white. <laughs> it's so good. I might just put the white like in the middle. Wow, this is such a throwback. <laughs> and then put the nude over. Okay, blushes, I think they just kind of use pinks. So I'm just going to go in with this because this is my favourite one at the minute. It's the Huda Beauty one, which I mentioned on my last vlog. It's very nice. But I think I'll put in more like on the front of my cheeks to give more... I feel like Victoria's Secret's like round, it's like baby face and it? it's not very snatched, I don't think. Right, lips is where I'm going to struggle because they've all got light pinky lips and I just can't do a pink lip. So I'm going to have to go in with... The Morphe 3T liner. And I've got the Charlotte Tilbury pink actually. This is probably my pinkest. The Pillow Talk. That's pink. I just never wear pink lipstick. I don't think it suits me. I think like 
Darker shades in me. Obviously, this doesn't go with the lip liner. <laughs> um, who was there? That's nice, actually. This is pinky. Okay, no, I'll go in with this. This is the Pua Zen. Is that light enough? I think I'm going to go old school and put a little bit of concealer in the middle because I think that's the only way I'm going to be able to lighten the lip at this point. So clumsy. How old school is it? <laughs> concealer on your lips. And then just gloss. I think I'll just use a clear gloss. This is the Armani one. It actually feels really nice on your lips. I think you need like quite a lot of it. I think. But it feels like a lip balm on your lip. Like it's not sticky or anything. But you do need quite a lot, I would say. Right, and then I'm going to put highlight on. Like I haven't even worn highlighter for so long. <laughs> It. it definitely looks different to my normal makeup which is nice because you know sometimes when you try something different then you end up looking exactly the same definitely different and um, yeah i'm feeling it so now i have to go and find something to wear and pray that my hair works out okay i'm having the dilemma where like my makeup is all like a light and pink and glowy that i feel like i can't be in black i've got bottoms on can you even see I feel like the makeup is like sweet and nice and then the outfit is, is not. I'm all over the place <laughs> this vlog. But I changed the blazer. This hasn't got a button on it, so I've just sewn it myself, which I'm pretty impressed with. But I've also, I think it looks better with a belt anyway, so I've just tied with a belt. And then I found a pair of tights. My last pair, so... Yeah, I've got these and then I've got, I've got my new burgundy heels from the last vlog. So pray that they come fit because. But yeah, okay, good. Happy enough for the outfit. Right, let's try this. Pray for me. I mean, I don't think it looks anything like the videos that I saw. <laughs> I need to go and look in the mirror. I literally can't see it. I think this light's so bright. But I think it's okay. Is it? I brought in the bathroom. The lighting is shocking. But it actually works. I'm really chuffed. So, my lesson of the month, for you even, is to curl under. Because I always used to try and curl over. But curling under is what's done here. Like, look at this bit here. Look at the volume. And it's not even in my eyes or anything. I'm actually ready first out for everyone, which quite literally now happens. So I'm just waiting for the go ahead and then I can be on my way. Exciting. This perfume is just from Zara and every time I wear it I get so many compliments. And because it's cheap I don't mind just like spraying loads of it. It's called Fashionably London and it's divine, like I'm obsessed with it. Oh guys, <laughs> today has been really unfair. I've been so hungover and I wasn't steaming. Like there was no need for me to have a headache for seven hours today. I had a couple of tequilas. I did have a glass of wine, which that's when I'm blaming for the headache, but oh my God, it was a late one. I think I got in at, I think I got into bed at three-ish and then woke up at 10, stayed in bed lazy and I've been really I felt really down all day I don't know if it's because like I've had a bad day and then I feel guilty oh I don't know I just yeah the troll in me came back out I just felt really down and then I had another nap at four oh but finally I do feel better now like obviously the headache's gone but I feel like less depressed like I'm out of the um hangover depression hole so that's something and I'm gonna have a nice relaxing bath because I don't know if you remember it's annoying that I'm filming in here I just feel like I look like a foot um I think in the last vlog in the last vlog I was saying I'm like oh yeah I might have a bath but I always say I'm going to and then I don't 
I have now become the bath queen. I've been in this bath more times in the last few weeks than I have in my entire life, I think. I've become obsessed. So that's what I'm gonna do. It just, it just makes me feel so much better. So this is the, um, my little pamper pack that I said that my friend Abby bought me. Did I show this last time? I didn't think so. She bought me the basket um, with like the Halloween stuff and then I just fill it with all like pamper things, like the neon things, the sleep stuff, face masks. So yeah, I think I'm gonna put a nice face mask on. And I've got like all the, basically like all the deep sleep things, you know, and the <laughs> calming pens and yeah, just like the relaxing stuff. So I'm going to run a bath, but I'm going to show you what I use because it has been an absolute game changer. Also, can we appreciate my hair? Since last night, all I've done is put on a in a bun right on the top of my head and the whole thing has stayed in. I didn't even use hairspray. I'm really chuffed. So tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing because I've got a very exciting event tomorrow. Um, so I'm going to do the same thing where I use that roller because look at that. I'm really chuffed that that stayed in. Okay, so usually I use this neon one which is absolutely lush. But obviously I didn't just want to use it every single time. So I thought I would just get a cheaper one to use like every day. So I got this and this is literally one bath and I've used half of it. Which is kind of why I wanted to buy the cheaper one because I really just wanted it super lovely. But this is so nice, it's like super cheap, it smells really nice and I felt like my skin was moisturised like when I was in the bath. But the biggest game changer for me is these, Magnesium Bath Flakes. Let me count you because it's, um, it's obviously loud in there. This is how I've had my hair all day by the way, this seems to be my new hack. I can't remember if I said, but did I, have I said this? I've told somebody, so maybe it was you guys, but I saw on a podcast that, you know, when you get that eye twitch, like sometimes your, your eye twitches, that is a sign of magnesium deficiency and you, you're deficient or you're low in magnesium when you're stressed. So basically, if you ever have that twitchy eye, it's probably because you're stressed. Um, and... Dr. Tara Swart, who I literally mention on the podcast all the time because I love her, she said that the best way for magnesium to go into... Should I put this down? Oh, never step. Um, she said the best way to take magnesium is through your skin, like, because I used to take a tablet before bed. Um, but she said the best way is through your skin, so she recommended the bath salts and put them in the bath. And then, yeah, I saw them and try them and they were so nice. I just found it like such a relaxing bath and my skin was so soft when I came out of it. And also I just think it's like mentally, if you know something's meant to be nice, I just think mentally, even if it doesn't work that well, like it still kind of works because you just think it's gonna work, do you know what I mean? It says to have 24 pets in, so that's quite a bit, isn't it? Also I haven't got pets, so I just, I just pray for it. So I'm gonna have to do a little of this in because, I just like, I just like to have a very lovely bath, you know? So yeah, it's quite late. Oh, can I do this with my left hand? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, to be fair, can I even do it with one hand? It's going to need the tool. I also didn't have nice, like, shower gel, like a nice bougie shower gel to put down, so I just transferred it into this. Which probably isn't the most practical, but um, that's what I'm doing. I feel like this neon candle is probably running out, actually. Uh, so yeah, this is my my evening. I'm gonna put a nice face mask on. Ignore the tray; it's very empty. And I've kept the mat, guys. I've kept it. Uh, yeah, I I it's grown on me. I think it's cute and fun. So yes, I'll see you in the morning. Tomorrow is Monday morning. I'm obviously working in the morning and then I'm getting ready because I'm going to Pride of Britain, which is very exciting. Guys, I'm getting ready. I'm running a bit late. I'm worried about my hair. I'm deeply concerned about this. Obviously it went really well last time, 
This time ain't looking so good, bruv. It ain't looking so good. So that's a biscuit, but makeup, makeup's going well actually. I really liked it last time, so I've pretty much done the same thing. Um just gone like a bit heavier with the eyeliner. So makeup is good. Hair, hair TBC. Okay, I am ready to go. I'm late, so I can't get the proper. <laughs> I can't get my um, tripod, but can I? I put on the grass. Shows are a little bit too short, but I think they're okay. I'm excited. right i bought a tiger bloom or tiger bloomer bread whatever it's called i've never felt more adult in my life i got the bloomer out and i cut it and i put it in the freezer and i just feel like quite accomplished and distinguished and i feel like an adult i've never cut bread in my life and i cut it properly as well Perfection, nice big fat piece of bread, yes please. Why is toast just the best thing ever sometimes? Look at that, oh my god. I am beyond excited to eat this, wow. I'm back on the smoothies. back and I went to go and get my nails done. I don't know if you remember in the last vlog, my thumbnail was fucked basically from getting biab, I think it's from getting biab infills. Um, I was hoping I could, that it would like be completely fixed and I could go back to biab but I can't so I have to have them cut down again. And gel. And how did I ever cope with gel all the time by the way because my nails feel like paper. Like, I just can't wait for it to be healed so that I can have buy up again. But yeah, I went for red. Guys, look at my plate. I haven't shown you this. I painted this for my friend's birthday. We went to like, we actually went to Bagatelle. I had a bottomless, no, it wasn't bottomless brunch. I think it was just like a normal brunch, but boozy. And then we went to a pottery class and I painted this girl in a plate because I am CEO of girl dinner. See, this isn't my dinner, but I am about to record my podcast and I'm starving and I feel like I have to eat something before I record. I don't know what's wrong with me this week but I've been so tired because I've just been incapable like truly of going to bed early which I always struggle with anyway but this week has been too fast being like one between one and two every night and I've just been so tired all week. Sometimes I feel a lot of guilt for not doing every single thing that I need to or that I want and I was talking to my friend about it the other week because she was the same like she was saying oh I feel down and I haven't done this and I haven't done that and I was telling her like please be kinder to yourself like you've still done x amount of things you you know it's not natural for us to be like machines going all the time but then I feel exactly the same if I'm not doing something productive in my day I feel awful for it like even if I go and have a bath and I've said I'm like a bath girl now and I relax I can't just like go on the bath and watch Sex and City or you know something like that like a comfort thing no if I'm in the bath I'm like okay I have to be on Pinterest looking for ideas or I have to be looking for stories for the podcast or I have to be reading something for my mental health or listening to something for my mental health like I don't know what's got into me the last few weeks but I cannot just sit and watch something or read something unless I feel like it's productive. It's, it, it's actually bad. I, I don't know, I think I'm just feeling like overwhelmed because I'm trying to do so much. When I can't do that I then like will go on my phone or something and I'm like well no but I can't do that I have to do something else and I basically feel like I'm trying to do so much at one time that I'm actually doing less than I've ever done before. 
that's how it feels like I didn't do my podcast episode this week which always makes me feel like the absolute worst but I'm vlogging so I feel like it's not the end of the world but like I don't like to miss podcast episodes um ever so yeah it's just been it's just been a bit of a week really and then by the time the end of the week comes I'm like next week next week will be better and then the week after comes and work, my job is so busy and stuff that everything just gets, it just gets a little bit overwhelming sometimes, you know, I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I think it's, I think it's a lot for this age, like people our age, this generation, whatever, I think it's a struggle because you're constantly faced with like feeling like you should be doing more, you could be doing more. Like this morning I woke up, I set my day by the hour. And when I look back at it this morning, I was like, I haven't given myself time to like sit down and eat or just like generally free my mind a bit, you know, um, needless to say, I haven't stuck to the plan every hour. I was behind like literally first thing. I was like, oh, I meant to have washed my hair, showered, tanned and written my podcast by now. Obviously it hasn't happened. <sighs> yeah, that's my mini rant anyway. Oh, do you know who I met? Francesca Amber and she's the podcast host of uh, the law of attraction changed my life and she is the person that inspired me to start my podcast so it was so tough to meet her literally I had a picture with her and I was chatting to her and I told her obviously um that I that I listened to her podcast because when I started the podcast it was like three years ago now and obviously podcasts were popular but nowhere near like they are now and I found her podcast because obviously you know I'm into like manifestation and positive thinking and stuff and when I was listening to her she I was just she was literally just recording from her house and she got kids and it was just her and I remember telling my friend like oh, I'm listening to this podcast and like I think I want to do one whatever and she's like oh I've never heard of anyone that's just got a podcast by themselves like at the time it was very much the people do it in teams and stuff obviously because it's easier or whatever and I was like, no, no, she does it herself. And I remember her saying how many um, downloads she has. And how she, she basically had a fake tan, listen to this, she had a fake tanning shop, right, a salon that she used to run. And I also went to the salon by complete chance because she was me mentioning it. And I think she mentioned once where it was. And it was my birthday. And I used to live in Finsbury Park. And she had a tanning salon in Islington. And I was like, oh my god, I need a spray tan. So I went there and she ended up texting me about my appointment. And I, t I didn't tell her this, but <laughs> I was like a stalker. Uh, she texted me once, I like, confirmed the appointment. And I was like, oh my god, this is Francesca. Like, I listen to your podcast. She's like, oh, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so funny. But she managed to close the salon and obviously make podcasting. And she's got like a book club on Patreon and stuff. And she's managed to make her a full-time job. So she was just always my inspo and I met her and obviously she was lovely um and yeah it was it was very nice her manifestation love story is crazy by the way I must have said you on an old episode but she literally manifested her husband so she uh, I'm gonna mess up the, lo the logistics now but the gist of the story is that she obviously believes in manifestation has been a huge part of her life and she made a vision board and she I can't remember what happened first. She either... No, this is it. This is it, I think. She... I think this is the order. She either matched with someone first or she matched with them after, which is a bit of an important timeline, but I, I can't remember, right? But I think... I think she matched with a guy and they spoke for a bit, like, on Tinder or whatever. And I think she messaged him or he messaged her, but they never saw it. They never spoke, basically, but she had a match with him. And I think either from that or she's seen his picture elsewhere, but she basically said, like, this man is going to be my husband. And she printed off his photo and she stuck him on her vision board. And she had this man on her vision board and she just said she knew when she had this feeling, which is mental, she didn't know him by the way. She must have taken his picture from matching with him, I think. And she was just like, he's going to be my husband, like I know I'm going to marry him. Anyway, this like months and months goes by. She's never spoken to this guy, bear in mind, right? She's just seen his photo. And her friend sets her up on a blind date and when she goes... 
the blind date is the guy. Is that not the most mental story you've ever heard? Probably butchering it, but you, you just Google it, Francesca Amber manifest husband story. But what's even more interesting is that she never ended up with him. Obviously they married and they had a child, I think she had her first child with him. Um, and it didn't work out. And I think he might be gay now. I feel like I'm saying a lot of things in this story and it's disrespectful because I can't remember all the details because it's like four years ago I heard this story now. But it stuck with me that she basically manifested him and then for whatever reason they divorced and it didn't work out even though they get on really well as friends and stuff. I remember that. But she said now, she said sometimes you manifest things um, that you think you want but not really what you need so and obviously it's so powerful when you when you manifest so now when she manifests she says this or something better because sometimes you can be manifesting your ex back into your life and he's not good for you you know you can be thinking I just want to get back with him and manifesting him when really there could be somebody here that's much better for you you know so sometimes yeah if you're into manifestations you should sometimes say this or something better and then you just put it to the universe, you know? And yeah, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Go and check out my podcast videos. I hope you all have a good week. And I'll speak to you soon.